Yeah. Hope you had a nice lunch. Uh, at the outset, I would uh, thank Dr. Uh, Makam Ramesh, Dr. Gauran, for this wonderful opportunity and a lovely venue for conducting this program. So, as we join the medical colleges, yes, um, the first day, the very first day, many professors used to say, what we learn in medical school gets outdated or completely wrong in the next five years, but no one knows which 50% is. So lifelong learning is a mandatory, I would say, for a good clinical practice. So what I have done is, I'm basically a surgeon trying to diagnose completely, but when I see patients getting reversed of PP, sugar, cholesterol, heart disease, PCOS, infertility, uh, fatty liver, most of the metabolic conditions, I just drop my scalpel because uh, six to seven years before, there were, there were researches going on in this field, but it is not being translated into clinical practice. More and more researchers, tons of researchers that are there, uh, the, uh, I would say in the uh, clinical equipment, but nothing has been translated into clinical practice. There is a difficult part here. So what we have done is, so what we have done is, um, we have been involved in research for about five to six years time, during which we have devised some protocols and uh, implemented in about 5,000 patients. And we have reversed most of the chronic conditions without drug or medicine. We help people to lead a disease-free and drug-free life. So we are currently in a situation where the NCD, that is a non-communicable disease, is an great epidemic. So you could really see the numbers, the prevalence of obesity, fatty liver is over 40% that we may not be aware of. So fatty liver has been treated like just, it's everywhere. It is nothing but to reduce the fat. It is not so, right? So it's a red alarm. It's a alarm from the liver. It's a screen, silent stream from the liver that is clearly unheard of. About one third of the population is hypertensive and about 10% of diabetics are tired. Only 10 out of 100 people are actually healthy metabolically. This is staggering, right? That, but we as healthcare professionals may not be even aware of this. Why the conventional medicine is failing now? So let it be an interactive session. Let it more, not be a lecture. You can, if you want to learn, what you can do is you have to participate. So that's the active way of learning. So let me know from your side why the conventional medicine is failing at chronic diseases. We know that modern medicine is the wheelhouse will will of all the acute emergencies, accident, trauma, medical or surgical. That's wonderful. They have excellent diagnostics. But when, when it comes to chronic conditions, why it is failing? Anyone? You're treating the symptoms. Any other answer? We have. That's wonderful. Yes. Non compliance, that's fine. Lifestyle, lifestyle. Okay, you are not regarding the lifestyle parameters. Fine, wonderful. Any other answers you have? Yes. We have stress that is not being taken care of, right? So let's see why it is failing. So the basic idea here is, you all know about this story, right? Six blind men and the elephant. So we have a lot of specialities and subspecialities, but we are not having a systems-based approach, right? We are having a non-systems-based approach in which we treat the each organ system separately. That's why we are failing. So what we are supposed to do now is we have to look at the roots of the disease rather than the surface. So for example, in obesity, what is the general advice we use to give the our patients? Eat less and more more. This is again based on calorie model. What about diabetes? Yes. What are the, how we are dealing with diabetes? We are looking only at the glucose number but nothing else. We are using insulin or drugs to keep the glucose in check. That's it. What about hypertension? What is the root cause of hypertension? 
We may not be knowing this. We call it idiopathic asphyxia, but we are dealing with it. Drugs, a lot of drugs. What about PCOS or infertility? We will again have a syndromic management, but nothing else. So what we are doing is we are not actually treating the roots of the disease, but rather we are only treating the symptoms. Okay. So we are not really helping the patients. Of course, the patient may be feeling better, but the diseases stays there for a lifelong time. So what we really need is a paradigm shift in medicine. We are too busy not to throw a lot of drugs rather than to switch off the turn of the cost. This is what is going on in community and in practice. So we are using a lot of drugs deal with these diseases that we call the sick care, we have to have a paradigm shift towards healthcare in which we can prevent rules and treat most of the chronic conditions and help patients to lead a disease-free and drug-free life. So what is really called the golden period? Anyone? In medicine. What is called the golden period in medicine? I would say with respect to diseases. For example, when a uh, patient comes with acute attack of like uh, MI or a stroke, what is the golden period? We usually call it. Okay, maybe like six to three to six hours or less than that, right? So, what is the golden period of diabetes? What is the golden period of diabetes? Anyone? So we know about what is the root cause of diabetes? Anyone? Type 2 diabetes? Insulin resistance. So when we when I talk about insulin resistance, we think only about diabetes and nothing else, isn't it? We think only about diabetes and nothing else. But the real reason is why I'm implement why I'm telling it's a golden period is. The diabetes is a late manifestation in the insulin resistance spectrum. It's a very late manifestation. Okay. So, first, this lipidemia comes, then followed by dysglycemia. So, this lipidemia is there for about 10 to 15 years' time before development of dysglycemia. So, if you pick up a patient in this state at this early spectrum of insulin resistance, during which a person is developing hypertension or risk of developing hypertension or that strokes, uh, PCOS, erectile dysfunction, infertility, gout, and dementia. We are ignoring this part of early spectrum of insulin resistance. Okay? Because we are not aware of it. That's the only reason we are ignoring it. So again, the road to type 2 diabetes, we know about normalcy, we know about Pre-diabetes, we know about diabetes, but the missing part is pre-pre-diabetes or diabetes in situ, in which the glucose level is normal, but the insulin level is far high. Why it is going high? Anyone? The glucose level is normal in pre-pre-diabetes, and insulin is far higher during this change. It's a it's not even compensating hyperinsulinemia due to insulin That's the answer. Okay. So if we so we have to implement this very important profile of watching or costing insulin numbers. Okay, this is a very important thing that we are involving that we, we may not be aware of this. So we have to get this tip done in place like costing insulin number and triglyceride histamine ratio more than 1.5. Let's you that the patient is suffering from insulin resistance. So if the person is suffering from insulin resistance, they have to treat them then and then and there so that the patient may not develop diabetes or hypertension or heart disease or PCOS or any other metabolic condition during his lifetime. Is it clear? So is there any way to uh, detect a patient before, I mean, with insulin resistance before the test is being done? Is there anything? So these are some of the signs of insulin resistance. We, within a few seconds, we can pick up whether a patient is suffering from insulin resistance or not by just looking at the uh, telltale sign that is the clinical 
signs, such as again to significance, which is nothing but lattice discoloration over the neurons, neck, and over the face. And a lot of skin tags, you have noticed in a lot of patients, but it is being treated cosmetically. But unfortunately, what we have to remember is face is not only the index of the mind, but your metabolic condition, right? So when a female suffers from acne, rosacea, androgenic alopecia, it's again a sign of insulin resistance. That is what we have to be a little aware of. Is there any other sign? No. Yes. So snoring is a silent scream. Okay. That you may not be aware of, but your spouse knows it. Okay. It's a silent scream because you may not be aware of it. So you snoring is again a condition, again a metabolic condition. That tells you that the cholesterol profile is altered. So, can anyone tell you the difference between type 1 and diabetes and type 2 diabetes? Anyone? Yes? Let it be an interaction. Yes, please. Type 1 and type 2. What is the basic difference between these two? Yes. Yes. It's not about that or very little, right? Due to autoimmune destruction of pancreas, right? So, what about type 2 diabetes? Yes. Yes. So, it's a condition of insulin inefficiency. Even a lot of insulin is there circulating into there. What happens is it's not working. But what we are doing with these conditions, type 2 diabetes, you are dealing with a lot of drugs that can in increase insulin separation, or else you, use, you are using insulin to treat type 2 diabetes. And hence, you are keeping the, keeping the disease lifelong. Okay, it's not a lifelong disease. It's, a, it's not a chronic disease. Okay, it's, it can be reversed within weeks, within months' time. That's it. Okay, only thing is, it's, since it is not given in our text, we are not aware of this reversals. So another myth is there, is a great delusion and you say, what is that? Whatever is formed to this good for others, is it so? No, right? So if we avoid the foods served at the restaurants are possible, are we healthy? Definitely not. Even the home food foods like those are idli or rotis and uh, made up of all this um, refined oils, I would say, these are actually toxins that we may not be aware of, okay? It is not all different from the food that is being served outside in possible restaurants. Adding fuel to the fire, again, the dietary guidance is killing us, okay? It is fueling the metabolic problems, actually, because we are diminishing fats, particularly the saturated fats, which are actually good for us, and uh, Actually, we are encouraging a patient to take a lot of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates by themselves is not a problem, but we are taking refined carbs. Okay, that is the real problem there. So, can anyone tell the basic difference between ultra processed foods and the real food? Yes. What is the basic difference between ultra processed food and real food? Anyone? Yes, please. So, you need to learn, right? You need to interact. Then only you can. Yes. Right. Right. Very good. Any other any other answers you have? Ultra processing and real food. So ultra processed food, if you clearly look into it, so when we take hundred grams of ultra processed food and hundred grams of the same grain. Contain the defined foods, how many grams of carbohydrates will be there in ultra processed foods and real food? This should be the take home in the field. This is very important. Very good, wonderful. Yes? Okay, the carbohydrate content will be the same, but what happens then? Because we go wonderful then. Fiber content is long. Fiber content is long. Again, yeah. So, what we need to understand is the carbohydrate content is the same, but it gets quick into the circulation. Okay? It is quick to cook and it is fast to get absorbed into the body. Right? So, the very important basic problem here is the 
insulin level. Okay, you are not designed to eat fast. Okay, you are designed only to eat the real food. This is what I call the biological mismatch because we have been evolved biologically over millions of years and we are not exposed to the fast food. Exposure to fast food causes hyperinsulinemia. Okay, so a lot of insulin is secreted than is required. A lot of insulin is secreted. I mean, it's secreted than is required for the same amount of power. This is what we have to know, right? For example, if one patient is taking a real food, maybe like 30 to 40 units of insulin is needed per day. So when one consumes the same amount of carbohydrates in the ultra processed form, what happens? About 150 to 200 units of insulin is secreted every day. That is the real problem. That should be the take home message to you, right? Is it clear for you? All? Any questions so far? Yes. So other contributing factors, maybe you all know that micronutrient deficiency and then the uh, like toxicity, limb stagnation, toxins in the form of alcohol, pesticides, insecticides, so stress, lack of sleep, sedentary sun, poor quality of water and air, and lack of sunlight. These all we all know about this. But what we really lack is this the primary thing is it could be age. Okay. Again, exposure to chemical forming, okay, in the form of hormone phosphorus may increase insulin resistance by increasing the glucotoxicity, lipotoxicity, insulin resistance, uh, and by increasing the oxidative stress and inflammation. So, what is the basic difference between chemical forming and organic forming formed foods? Anyone? What is really missing in chemical form nowadays? As a physician, you should also know these things. Okay, you should have also, I mean, then all this field work, you should also know these things. What is the basic difference between these two? What is really missing in the last uh, 50 to 60 years time after the introduction of following evolution? What we have lost is the cultivation of multi crops in a given field, and we have lost the rotation of crops. Okay, so the minerals are getting depleted in the soil. You can clearly see the organic matter and a lot of minerals are depleted in chemically formed foods. Okay, this we may not be aware of it. We are totally a hormonally modified man nowadays. Okay, compared to the human society for millions of years, we are completely a hormonally modified man because we have at least two to three times the insulin secretion in the last 40 to 50 years. Any of you? Any questions? Yes, please. Any questions so far? So, people look wonderful, right? The limb, I mean, the slim, fit, agile, active 50 to 60 years ago. But how we are now? The whole society is going towards this overweight and obesity, right? At least abdominal obesity nowadays. But why we are trying so hard to lose weight, isn't it? But why we cannot lose weight? What is the real reason? Anyone? Yes, please. What we are telling the patients to lose weight? What is the real advice they give the patients? Yes, nutritionists. Nutritionists are there, right? Yes, please. So, what is the advice we used to do? We calculate everything based on calories, right? So is it really working? It's not working, why? How we can increase the BMI? I mean, scientifically, how can you increase the BMI? Okay. Okay, we talk, what is the first law of thermodynamics? Thermodynamics, what is the first law of thermodynamics? Anyone? That is what we are implementing in our biology. Okay, our biology is before different from physics. Just because we are applying the law of physics in biology, we really suck at losing weight. Okay, what really happens when you are taking less calories? What really happens? What really happens when you are taking less calories? Of course, we lose weight for, for some time, but after that, we may not be able to sign. And when you are going back to the normal food, what happens? Weight gain, 
comes back in vengeance, right? It comes in vengeance. So what really happens is Behemoth gets really low. Okay, so when you are getting the number of gold, you are getting more and more weight. Is the same thing? Say or not? Is there any questions? So when you have the normal insulin levels, you will not be having ectopic deposit, deposition of fats in the liver, muscle, pancreas, and the viscera. When you're having high insulin levels in the presence of simple carbohydrates, you will be developing a lot of ectopic fat in the liver, muscle, pancreas, and viscera, and also in the heart. And then that is a real reason why people are suffering from all these chronic disorders. Okay? The deposition of ectopic fat in the liver, muscle, pancreas, viscera, heart, and all the organ systems. It happens only in the presence of hyperinsulinemia and also simple sugars or refined carbohydrates. Is it clear to you? Yes or no? Again, the dyslipidemia is a whole lot of problem nowadays. Why? I have already told you that dyslipidemia comes first, followed by dyslipidemia, right? So, another thing is, have you enjoyed watering the garden? Yes or no? So, if you want to increase the distance the water covers, what you usually do? You'll upload the hose partially, right? So, what really happens there? Pressure increases, right? Same way, the pressure inside our blood vessel increases whenever there is a partial occlusion. In the sense, like in insulin resistance, what really happens is there is some magic molecule called nitric oxide that is reduced. Okay, so the blood vessels goes in for partial contraction. Okay, partially contracted states. Hence, the pressure increases. It's no more idiopathic or essential. Clear for you? Okay. So, what is the real reason behind hypertension? Is it the salt intake? Yes. What is the first advice we give it to our patients when someone comes with high BP? Restrict salt. Is it the really the salt intake? Okay. So, is it so? Are we really able to reverse those conditions of like high BP completely without drugs? No, right? So, what really happens is the property of hyperinsulinemia or high insulin levels, it retains a lot of sodium inside our system. Okay? So, when an insulin sensitive person takes a lot of salt, you will be able to eliminate the salt without any effect. Okay? But when a person with insulin resistance takes salt, what happens? He retains sodium. Whenever sodium is retained, what happens? Secondly, water retention will happen. And this water retention along with sodium increases the blood volume. And increasing blood volume increases the pressure. Is it clear for you? It is not really the salt or the water required that is insulin resistant that should be taken care of in all hypertensive patients. And really disheartened to see any patients with such conduction diet. Gate, right? You have seen a lot of patients with certain detection gate. Is it, is it not? Haven't you? Haven't you? Yes. So, what is the real reason behind heart attack and strokes? It's not the cholesterol. Okay. It's not the cholesterol, but rather the insulin resistance and the atherosclerotic loss formation. Okay. What is What are these celebrities have in common? Yes, they all suffered from heart disease, right? They are all underwent angioplasty in the recent past, is it not? So you cannot outrun a bad diet out of exercise. You should know this. And I would say this is the cholesterol scam is the largest scam in the history of medicine. Why? The history of medicine, cholesterol scam is the largest scam. Why? In the 1960s, people demonized saturated fats and cholesterol as the causation of heart disease. Right? In 1984, what happened? People were demonizing LDL cholesterol. What is good cholesterol and bad cholesterol? Yes, yeah. yes, good and it is bad. Okay, this is the conventional teaching, right? But it, it, it may not be so. It may not be so. 
And uh, the models have already confirmed that translated facts are good for you. Okay, but it may not be there in your text. And your uh, basic implications to take poly and separate facts, which is again fueling the hypothesis. Okay, so a lot of researchers are going on throughout the world, but the researchers are not being translated into clinical practice or guidelines or protocols. That's why snorting belongs or nothing but the inflammatory patients are escalating the position of ectopic deposition of fat in the blood vessels, supplying the heart, and also in the heart. This is what we should know. It is not about cholesterol, but rather it's an inflammatory disease. Okay, what is this? It's an inflammatory disease. Where does the cholesterol comes into play in this picture? Anyone? Yes. So I have told you that cholesterol is an inflammatory condition. Okay, particularly the atherosclerotic formation. So where the cholesterol comes into play here? Yes, please. Can make any guess if it doesn't mean, I mean, uh, can be wrong. Thank you. Yes, it's a band aid, right? Band aid to the unit. See, the cholesterol that comes in the picture in terms of like it's like a firefighter, okay? But we are demonizing the cholesterol, which is again a firefighter in this condition, okay? What does cholesterol do? Why cholesterol is so much important? It is involved in cellular regeneration and repair, okay? So it comes in the picture here. Yeah. Oh, so you should not demonize cholesterol, but rather you should be able to appreciate that all disease is really an inflammatory condition. Okay. Can anyone guess what it's supposed to tell? Yes, please. So all of you know about this, right? Right. Ever picture? Yeah, so we live in this modern world. We are very having this mission towards Mars and Chandra and the moon, but rather the sun quality in our present generation is not being able to like travel 15 to 20 centimeters to reach from the board. Okay, we are living in this world. So, what is the real reason behind it? Family planning, maybe like 50 years ago, it's something really different. It's all about this relationship. Now, what is family planning really means? Getting enrolled in a fertility center, right? So, the very reason why people suffer from infertility is male infertility is erectile dysfunction. There is again due to this sense of that. Yes. Female infertility is most common cause of PCOS, which is again due to this sense I would say that insulin resistance is the primary reason why we are suffering from most of the chronic conditions now. I can even challenge that. And I would highly appreciate if you challenge my ideas. What is this? Colorful ribbons that we actually recognize every month for every various form of cancer, right? So we are not again, if you are treating the root cause of the disease, but rather we are treating with drugs, chemotherapy with drugs, surgery, and radiation. Actually, it is a metabolic condition that has to be treated from its roots. We all know that that is the seat of hell, but most of our population is suffering either from GRD or arthrod, and most of us are suffering from chronic constipation. And secondly, to that, we have a lot of patients with spikes, hemorrhoid fissures, and whatnot, right? And uh, inflammatory disorders, and also inflammatory irritable bowel syndrome. So, the gut is the seat of hell. When it is getting affected, what happens? It fuels the metabolic disorders too. So let's see what is happening with respect to diabetes. When we see the road map to diabetes, what happens is from a normal lean patient to normal obese to early type 2 diabetes and late type 2 diabetes, we can clearly see that what happens is the basal secretion of insulin increases, whereas the peak insulin secretion increases. Even in early type 2 diabetes, or maybe some state, some uh, stages of type, uh, late type 2 diabetes, insulin secretion is normal or higher. But the problem is, it's not working in your body. That is what we should know. It's not working in your body. 
So I would say it's not a beta cell failure, but rather it's a beta cell abuse. Okay, it's a beta cell abuse. That is the real reason behind type 2 diabetes. Why is the beta cell is getting abused? Yes, you should be able to tell the answer by now. Why the beta cell is being abused now? You're consuming ultra processed foods and making them to secrete two to three times the normal amount of insulin that should be secreted for the human carbohydrate. Is it not? Is it going for you? She lost. This is not right. Okay. So respect your beta cells by switching your diet from ultra processed foods to real food. So what we are supposed to do for all these chronic conditions, what we are supposed to do is we have to defat the lipotoxicity. What is defatting the lipotoxicity? Lipotoxicity is nothing but the portion of fat in the liver, muscle, pancreas, or the surround, all these organs. These organs are not designed to store fat. So, what is the organ that is designed to store fat? Anyone? What is the organ that is designed to store fat? From head to toe, there is a subcutaneous space, right? So, from head to toe, there is a subcutaneous space that is beneath our skin and above the muscle area. There are a lot of subcutaneous space. But due to consumption of ultra processed foods, the storage happens inside the organs. That is not supposed to happen. That is the real reason why we are suffering from most other chronic conditions. So, in, with respect to diabetes, we are what we are currently following is the glucose entry model, and it is not right. Just lowering the glucose with a lot of fats or insulin may not be the answer, but rather we have to look at the insulin entry paradigm where we have to lower the insulin resistance and by eating real food, and we can keep the patient in diabetes remission for life long. Another method is we just lose 10% body weight, everything aligns to normality. It is not so. Actually, we have plenty of patients, even without losing one single kg of weight, that have lost their chronic condition just by losing the fat inside the liver and viscera. It can happen. Okay? We have seen it in a lot of patients. Another epidemic is sarcopenia. Okay? Because our whole generation is suffering from sarcopenia, that is muscle loss and function. This can again cure the metabolic disorders. From outside, you may be looking better, but from inside, you will be having a lot of fat, but very little muscle. So, what we really need to know is we cannot fix healthcare until we fix, we fix health. We cannot fix health until you fix diet and lifestyle. We cannot fix diet and lifestyle until we know what is wrong and where we can go. These last two questions are so important to understand to deal it holistically. Food is medicine. Already, Doctor Bulete, will a fresh So, what is the uh, reason behind these low carb diets? Yes, carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. You all know that, right? So, West knows the carbohydrates only the refined form. They don't have knowledge about the carbohydrates that they are consuming for thousands of years. Okay, the epidemic of all the NCDs happens only in the last 60 to 30 years, not before that, which means carbohydrates are not bad. But the West keeps demonizing the carbohydrates because this knows more about low carbs, but they are not aware of our 
slow carbohydrates for traditional foods. Is it clear for you? Yes or no? Of course, low cost are good, low carb or keto may be low, but it is highly unsustainable in our Indian subpopulation. So, what we really need to understand is most of the food that we cater healthy. It is what we have done to play is killing us in two forms. One is ultra processing, and the second one is chemical forming. That is turning the food into poison. Okay, know these things. And uh, so, what we are supposed to do now? You have to consume real food. What is the definition of real food? Anyone? What is the basic difference between ultra processed food and real food? So, it has to protect the liver from excess sugars. It has to feed the gut with fiber and nourish your brain. Okay? So, real food is low in sugar and high in fibers. Sugar in the sense, refined sugar, I mean, it's not glucose. So, we have implemented protocols with respect to even the body phenotype or the body uh, composition, like whatever we call conformation call, ectomorphism, and then internal respectively. And what we really need is the pharmacy. We have you have to watch for the spells here. And uh, your physician diet, herbal remedies that is readily available at your own kitchen. And uh, of course, uh, exercise yoga, meditation, and also supplements if at all needed. So when no medicine works, fasting could be could be your wonderful medicine. Why? Anyone? Could it be wonderful? Anything else? Any other? Why fasting can work when no medicine works? Okay, you are actually straining the energy needed towards rejuvenation and repair. Okay. Anything else? Okay, yeah. under low insulin levels, all the equipment fats will be placed and you will be in the um, nutrition ketosis. And ketosis is a wonderful condition that can rejuvenate your body, can decrease the inflammation as well. Right? Any other answers you have? Reposting is so important. And we have been practicing fasting for so long in the form of in the name of religion or culture. But we have lost this current practice. And one way of preventing cancer is to practice fasting at least once or twice a week in a way that we can induce the immunity and kill the cancer cells. Clear for you? Okay. So our mind, nervous system, hormonal system, and the immune system are so much interconnected that when one gets affected, the other gets automatically affected. There are so much in synchrony with each other. This is what we had to know. And we deal with all these chronic conditions. Exercise is so good because it's a stress buster, and even a single bone of exercise can, can increase the insulin sensitivity, it can increase the nitric oxide, which is nothing but the superman molecule of the cardiovascular system, and it increases mitochondrial biogenesis by a factor of about 5 to 10, which means you will be having a very good metabolic profile if you do exercise regularly. We have to change our working station in a way that we with little bit of activity going on in between. So there is no planet B, okay, or no plan B. Man didn't view the web of life, we are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the earth, we do for all to do for ourselves. So, see this gentleman in the sixties and still look like very early twenties or thirties, right? So it's a timely reminder to make diet and lifestyle a high priority. What I would say is my contribution to our humanity is I have developed this low insulin protocol through which we have reversed uh, thousands of. Uh, patients from all the chronic disorders and we are told to prevent, worse and treat most of the metabolic conditions. We are, we have both to treat millions with a lot of doctors and in hold with each other. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity.
Any question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, lot of patients when we uh, look at the uh, nimbus with the patients who have cyber disease, a lot of things are poor, poor, poor. Uh, anything like the hypertension, the protein levels are very, very low. Right. So, we are asking the experts for it to maintain this. Yeah, the problem of AHA is how much are they recommending nowadays? How much are they recommending and what is this patient? AHA about 1.5 times, which is very low actually. Low salt intake is actually associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Okay, so researchers, but the AHA is not actually backing that science, and rather they are asking us to indulge in low salt diet, which is actually bad for us. We should be able to consume at least four to five grams of salt every day. I mean, sodium every day. Okay, so no need to restrict your salt, but rather they have to take care of insulin resistance. That is the real reason why we are suffering the most of the chronic conditions. Yes. Any other questions they have? Yes, please. Yes. So you can go into the warning signs of the disease. Now, other than seeing the blood supply, are there any other warning signs? If they come out with you and then see the blood supply. Yes. So, whenever a patient comes with fatty, your water is the first advice we used to have. It's benign. Right? It's benign. It's everywhere. Every other patient is having that. Associated ultrasonographic sign, but may not be so. Just because the entire population is setting towards metabolic ill health doesn't mean that fat is a strong It's a red flag sign. So, if anyone suffers from fat liver, he or she may be developing diabetes or hypertension or, or disease in about 5 to 10 years on the line. So, it's a red flag sign and it should be treated then and there. Right. Yes. So you say told us lifespan, diabetes, fasting. Yes. Could you take one particular topic like diabetes, diabetes, anything? Can you know of uh, I mean, give us an idea for each? How do you go about it? Right. How do you pay to take this like? Because five thousand family have diabetes. Yeah. So what I develop is low insulin protocol, which is nothing but consuming real food, and we are not supposed to consume carbohydrates and fats at the same time. This will fuel the epidemic of obesity and overweight according to the random cycle. And you should go through all these things so that you will be getting some idea of knowledge regarding this. Okay, so um, you have to avoid all the refined oils, switch, switch over to saturated fats, that is very good for you. And uh, oil saturated oils are nothing but all the animal source foods are saturated. saturated. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, B is wonderful, butter is wonderful, okay? And the coconut oil is saturated one, that's wonderful, but we don't recommend it to our patients, unfortunately, right? So, we have to switch over to these saturated fats. And uh, again, you should not consume food in the form of ultra processed forms, like those are easy. It's not good for you. It's, it is meant only for the special occasions of SDG things. Okay, what happens when you consume other processed food? Why we are loving those are in the every time you consume it? Anyone? Yes, please. What we love taking it. Why your ancestors didn't take those, even though they had a luxury of taking it every day, but they didn't take, right? Why is it so? You will get a spike, dopamine spike, whenever you are consuming other processed foods. Okay? Dopamine spike when you are consuming ultra processed food in the form of those already, that will give you a little high, and that's why you are failing every day. Okay? The food addiction is real. Any other questions you have? Yes, please. And you can ask any sort of questions, doesn't matter. A lot of times you see a lot of cravings are because of the parasites and other things. So, if you think, yeah. how can we say it to go away? Yeah. Both, both hand and say hand and hand, but you cannot separate both of these. Okay, both of those hand and hand, I would say. If you change your power, you can change the microphone. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. That could be possible. That has been uh, actually uh, in experimental science. Yes, of course, it is tested. And uh, but I personally think that what we consume determines the microbiome rather than the microbiome determining the health. It's a secondary thing. From my side, from my side, my perspective. Yes. Yes. So now the damage is done by the Yes, of course. Uh, we have to have in fact micro microbiome all the time, but it is important lifestyle that determines the nature of the microbiome. And uh, it's not the other way from my perspective, but otherwise, yes, of course, a lot of uh, prebiotics and uh, postbiotics are there that can determine our health, particularly metabolic health. <clears throat> yes, please. Any questions? You can ask any other questions. See, I uh, I'll be pleased to answer you. Yes, please. Not only this field, but the uh, general questions you have. Yes. Yes. Right. So what really happens with metabolic surgery is that is. Reversal of all the metabolic condition prior to weight loss. Okay, so there is a certain GLP to GLP ratio that is the primary reason why people are able to have this reversal of metabolic conditions. And just because the food is going right into the right directly into the hindgut instead of the proximal intestine, there is a shift in metabolism. Is it clear? Not yes. In the post-surgery, after how many years we see the problem? No, the thing is, again, bariatric surgery, we have to be a little aware of some of the deficiencies that can happen, and we have to supplement them for lifelong. So, if we dumping the food directly this time, rather than just regretting Yeah. Yeah, of course, it's always. Again, there are some consequences to it. And um, yeah, Gaurav will be able to elaborate it a little deep, right? Professor so, says, so of course, the, there is some amount of uh, resistive uh, insufficiency which happens, which causes the malabsorption and malabsorption. So, <coughs> uh, it's, it's basically this benefit ratio. So these patients who are morbidly obese, if we uh, will will have a lot more benefits than those little bit of malnutrition in the uh, spend time more. Room number ten or nine. Because the person the patient is not enough time to Come to board scanning system. Come to board scanning system. So, for curation to happen, HCL is important. Okay. So, for 20 to watch it. It's so important. So, it's so important. Room number 20 to watch any patient. Left front of the side of the side. So, how do you do? 22, 22. Room number 5 of the side. 5 of the side. 5 of the side. Right, so there is a lot of us and that can be actually increased the risk of our back sports. That's because I'm using PPAs for maybe for 2000. Send for Lagida. Send for Lagida. So I just want to move. Inform you that so we have revised one uh, software which can give you all the clinical nutrition aspects, okay? And uh, with respect to diet, lifestyle, and uh, all the supplements with each visits to our patients and having giving to the healthcare professionals. If you are interested, let me know about that. And uh, we are expanding our service across the across our nation to franchising model in which. Uh, we train the uh, doctor 
and the uh, limitation of the returns for the whole stock of the economic conditions as well. We have devised the protocols for more than I mean, about 30 cases, 120 uh, clinical diagnosis, okay, separately, uh, which is like uh, which covers about 90 to 95% of the total health care. So, how long it does it take to like excel in functional medicine? How long does it take? Yes, please. How long does it take to excel in functional medicine? That is uh, translating the researches into clinical practice by yourself. How long it does it take, for example? Yeah, at least five years. I would say at least five years, right? So if you are like a working full time, it will take at least five years. What we have done is we have translated everything into clinical practice so that even without learning anything, you will be getting better results for patients. So we will be able to like uh, give you a protocol that can uh, save your time and effort and everything. Any questions? Yes, please. Yeah, it's a software interpreter through which we have to feed the patient's interests. And uh, I have developed an algorithmic model multiple, with multiple functionality and that can actually guide you to treat the patient. The very next second, you will be able to take a print of how to go with these patients. And with each visit, the, I mean, the uh, guideline will be different. So it will be automatically correct. It's a dynamic one, it's not a static one, it's rather than rather a dynamic model, I would say. There is no need to, I mean, it's always good to learn life from, but I would say it will actually uh, give you a lot of benefits in a way like you can save time and for your mm -hmm. learning all those aspects. Is it a dynamic pattern you keep updating the Yes, of course, yes, we do, and we will give you a periodical training for all the uh, fantasy. Uh, the healthcare professionals and nutritionists and dietitians. What is the change in uh, actual endoscopy of the skin? In how many patients do you have a risk of In three weeks' time, we have seen in hundreds of patients who are, who are not willing to take endoscopy of the And uh, these patients typically are getting rid of training, particularly angina or the effort angina. For all these conditions within about two to three weeks' time, I've seen in a lot of patients. I've treated hundreds of patients. The uh, microangiopathy goes maybe in a quarter of a month, not more than that. I've never seen a patient not getting rid of angina infection without what uh, Is there any objective evidence um, to measure? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, of course. We can do that in each and every day, but uh, the problem is uh, and there is so much invasive, right? I mean, invasive in the sense that the patients are uh, exposed to radiation, but I usually don't suggest them going for those things. But rather, the easiest thing what we can do is cut off the angiogram, which is again reflecting the formation. So the PAMT test will be of the if we implement in our practice. The intimate medial thickness will give you an um, answer for this. It's not invasive, it can reflect the pulse condition. What's going inside the pulse? Have you tried to see your own kidney after the Yes. In the eye, any retinoscopic changes? Yeah, yeah, of course. We have a lot of patients who come in, who came with retinopathy in about uh, three to six months' time. Uh, that will be having your wonderful results. It may not be 100%, but at least 80 to 90%. What about neuropathy? You mean diabetic neuropathy or neuropathy in general? Diabetic. So, the uh, diabetic neuropathy happens due to a lot of conditions, particularly vascular as well as due to abnormal glycation. Okay. So for the nose to get to the region greater, it, it needs about three to four months time to 
based before which we may not be able to see the full benefit. But it is again reversible in most of the conditions. There are no questions. Are you aware of this statement? Yes. Okay, thank you everyone for your patient listening. Stop your